Ah, parece ela. Ah. Ok, let's start our, our last talk in this section. Last one, but not less important. Nossa. Uh, <laughs> Professor Lucas Celery is a, an ah. old friend from Federal University of São Carlos. We studied together there. He was in that picture I showed you before. Several, uh, several pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, you, just Skinner. Yeah, yeah. Much Skinner. Too. And he is also part of this big family uh, here. He's going to talk about gauge invariant quantum thermodynamics. He changed a little bit the title, but please yeah. go ahead, Lucas. Um, so, uh, first, good afternoon, everybody. And um, yeah, I, I changed the talk of my. Uh, the, the title of my talk, actually, and I do this very often. I should not do this, but anyway, it, it, it happens. But I, I will end up in talking about uh, entropy in dynamical Casimir effect by the end of the talk. Anyway, um, so I hope that you enjoy this. Is, although the title is um, looks like difficult, but it's not. It's, it's, it's a very simple thing because I don't like to do difficult things. So, so it's, it's, it's very simple. First of all, I needed to annulate fuzzy agencies and, and also uh, also the, 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 the organizers and, and the funding coming from, from here, from the university here. Thank you very much for hosting this thing. And um, this is a friend of mine where the, uh, this work started when I was a visiting professor in Spain and this guy went there to visit me. He works in Gdansk. And, uh, and we started discussing these things because there is, um, well, there are plenty of literature today talking about the quantum formulation of thermodynamics. And I say, look, these guys uh, um, uh, are, talking, uh, are talking different things and, and let us see if you can understand the thermodynamics from the point of view of classical thermodynamics. And that was the idea of this uh, work. But uh, I will not show any pictures here because um, um, plenty of people showed a bunch of people, a bunch of pictures from from São Carlos where I'm, uh, I was I was raised and and um, raised as a as a scientist there in the group of Celso. Celso uh, was there. I was actually we shared we shared a, a, an office there in São Carlos. Very nice. And was when I, I met Professor Vitor Dodonov and Alexander Dodonov as a student there. And, uh, well, I don't speak Russian, so uh, uh, um, many, many congratulations for the 75th birthday, Professor, and um, it was really a pleasure to, to meet you uh, many years ago and see you today. Uh, as Celso just told us, it's the same, the same guy, just me, that is not the same, I mean, it expanded a little bit, but uh, many, many congratulations and many thank you for for everything that you did for, for in, in physics. I mean, I did my PhD in dynamic Casimir effects, so I read basically all of his papers. And um, I, I learned a bunch of physics reading what, uh, what he wrote. And so thank you very much and many congratulations. Professor. So let us, I will start the talk talking about classical thermodynamics, um, just to show why we are considered a gauge theory to describe thermodynamics. Um, we have we have that uh, not only Newton's law of motion, but every every fundamental physical theory um, respects the time reverse symmetry, which means that we don't see reversibility there. That everything is reversible. Everything uh, there is no entropy. There is no or nothing actually. So, but of course we see we see reversible things, irreversible phenomena everywhere around us, and one of the things that we want you to, to, to understand is from where these come from. I mean, from where the, this reversibility comes from. How, how to compute, how, how to prove that the things are actually irreversible in, um, in a macroscopic sense, when the microscopic laws of nature are all time errors. So this is a problem that is relatively well understood in classical physics, except in general relativity. When general relativity enters the game, then absolutely nothing is is, is, is understood actually, uh, but um, so let us keep relativity out of this thing. Uh, and the answer we have is 
basically lack of knowledge. I mean, uh, we use we used to describe um, uh, macroscopic bodies using a few a few uh, uh, a few uh, variables because we are simply throwing away a bunch of information that we simply don't have access. So this is this is what we we usually do in the, in, in classical thermodynamics, in usual thermodynamics. So uh, in classical thermodynamics, what happens is that our our measurements, our macroscopic measurements, they are actually performing time and space average, which means that the scales that we are using are much bigger than the scales of microscopic dynamics. So we simply don't care about these things. Actually, don't care about if, if the atomic, if that in, in the atomic level, the microscopic degrees of freedom are following the laws of classical or quantum mechanics. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that is that fluctuations goes to zero in the microscopic limit, and and we have um, and we have our measurements that are uh, of course graded in this sense. From this procedure, the thermodynamic quantities emerge. And uh, what is what what's really nice is that uh, we have, um, although we have uh, um, infinitely many microscopic degrees of freedom, we have just a few macroscopic variables that are able to describe the system in the thermodynamic system. This is this is really amazing. That's why people say that thermodynamics is universal, although it's not a fundamental law, fundamental theory of physics. Is it emerging? Uh, it emerges from for a microscopic, um, uh, for the microscopic laws. So that being said, the paradigm of classical thermodynamics is that, that we have a subjective lack of knowledge um, that arises from the, from the, from, from the coarse grain in the nature of our measurements, of our classical measurements. And, and we actually uh, are not able to to follow the, the underlying complex dynamics of all the, 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 the internal degrees of freedom, the, the microscopic degrees of freedom. Here, we go in the same direction, but in quantum systems, uh, we, want, we want to apply, to apply the, same, the, the same thing here, but not with quantum measurements, because th these guys are, are, are completely different from the, the classical measurements, so it doesn't matter uh, to we cannot do this the same thing here but the question that you ask was can we can we uh, um, actually devise a theory in which in which we can implement a sort of coarse graining but that's universal in the sense in the sense that i throw all the information that's not relevant from the point of view of thermodynamics i simply throw away this information and some variables emerge in order to describe the, the, the thermodynamics of systems uh, from quantum, from quantum uh, mechanics. That's the idea of the theory. And the reason why gauge, gauge symmetry is this. Um, first, there are several, several approaches to, to, to quantum thermodynamics in literature. We have, of course, quantum statistical mechanics. We have a I think called the research theories that say that the free stages are those in thermodynamic equilibrium and research stages are those that are out of equilibrium and these are limited. And people ask what you can do with this. Uh, that is density functional theory, which uh, was published by, by Roberto, that is over there. Um, we have uh, some axiomatic formulations of thermodynamics. This is just one of them, but we have several. And we have an uh, information theory approach to thermodynamics. And we will focus here on information approach of thermodynamics because we, the, the gauge will simply um, exist in information theory and it, it will be built in order to throw away redundant information in the system. That's the main idea. So the general goal is how we can extend concepts like heat and work to the thermodynamic key, uh, to, to, to quantum mechanics. I mean, these things are easy to define, to define in classical physics because uh, there we have um, classical trajectories in phase spaces, so we can simply define these guys. Uh, uh, we can define work and we can define heat through conservation of energy and everything is well defined and unambiguous. In quantum thermodynamics, we have a bunch of them. So um, 
and they are usually non-equivalent. And we ask how, how to define it easy in a, in a sensible way, in a mathematical, uh, with a, a solid, uh, and, uh, on a solid mathematical ground. And then we, we have this take. So we keep the same spirit of classical thermodynamics, which means that you have two information, too much information in the system. We want you to throw away the irrelevant information. And, um, and based on the gauge invariance principle, we define all the quantities that are physically relevant as those that are invariant under the action of the Gray's group. Well, uh, I don't know if any, anybody here, I don't know if I need to explain to anybody what gauge principle means, but the, I mean, it's a fundamental principle in, in, in physics. Every, every fundamental physical theory that you know today is a gauge theory, and it defines the same way. I mean, we have a gauge group, that's a symmetry group, and relevant quantities are defined in terms of uh, as those that are invariant under the action of this group. Okay, um, okay let us see uh, how we can do this. First, usually when we talk about quantum thermodynamics in literature, we have um, uh, absolute control of the, 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 the system. We know the density operator, we know, we, know, we know the operations that we're applying on the density operator, we know the measurements, we know everything. In several, in, in several cases, we even know the, the state of the environment. So we know, we know too much. In, in, in thermodynamics, uh, um, we, we have, in, in classical thermodynamics, we have even less information than here in classical physics because the state of the system, quantum, quantum state of the system, it contains much more information than in classical system in the state, in the sense that it contains information about the basis. Why in classical, term, in classical physics, we don't have this thing. So um, the, the, the stage of the system contains too much information. Like the, 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 the micro stage of a classical system contains too much information for thermodynamics. A macroscopic measurement cannot, cannot, cannot uh, uh, take this information back. So that's the first thing. And um, why gauge? Because most of the, this information is simply uh, uh, not important for for the thermodynamic description. In, in the same way that positions and velocities in classical physics are not important for thermodynamics, we, we simply don't care about about the microstate of the system of the uh, of the classical system. We just care about about the uh, uh, averages of these guys. And here is the same thing. So. Um, in, in, in the same sense that uh, these, uh, these uh, information are too much in, in classical physics, we say that in quantum information, the, the, the information contained in the quantum state is too much. We know too much. And the question is, how can we get rid of this information? In classical physics, it's okay because we know how macroscopic measurements work, so we know how to do this. But in quantum physics, we don't know how to do this. But we know gauge invariance. Gauge invariance, it does exactly this thing. It throws away redundant information. That's the job of gauge invariance. The, the most known uh, um, gauge theory that we, we understand, the easiest one, and the first one that are getting contact in undergrad course, is electrodynamics. Everybody knows electrodynamics here. And we have the potentials represented by this guy here. And the potentials, we have infinitely many potentials. We have infinitely many degrees of freedom that are simply not relevant for computing physical quantities like the electric field or the, uh, or the magnetic field or scattering, scattering amplitudes. Because what you measure in laboratory is this guy are the scattering amplitudes and not the potential. The potentials are not physical quantities. The job of the gauge is taking us from this set which contains too much information to the relevant physical quantities that you can go to the laboratory and measure these things. So that's why we thought about the let us build a gauge theory for, for thermodynamics and define things based on this guy. So here we have, um, in, instead of the set of potentials, we have the set of um, density operators that describe the system. Those are the guys that carry information carries everything. So if, I, if, if I'm here, I can do uh, usual quantum mechanics and I, I know everything. 
I, I don't need to do thermodynamics. I, I can simply compute whatever I want. There is no dissipation, there is nothing actually. But we're not here. And then the idea of this work here is to build a gauge group that takes us from this set to this set, which is the set of relevant thermodynamic quantities. So that's that, that's the fundamental idea behind this this um, this work, and that's why we start uh, uh, discussing these things. I mean, how to define things in thermodynamics based only on on, on on symmetry arguments, and the point is that how to how to to define this group then. No? That's the the, the the difficult part here. Uh, one thing that we must say is that um, there is a huge difference between these guys. Because this guy here is a fundamental case. I mean, we cannot, we, we, we cannot uh, improve our measurements and get rid of this group. There is no way to do this. This is fundamental redundancy that you have in nature. That, 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 that there is no, no, no way to get rid of this thing. While this guy is based on our lack of uh, controlling of the system. So it's not fundamental. That's why we call this guy the emergent gauge group. So the, gauge, the symmetry gauge emerged from uh, um, our lack of knowledge. That, that's the main point of this thing. And that's why we are using uh, gauge symmetry here. Um, Celso, at what time do I start? did I start? Ah, the 15 minutes. Oh, OK. I have just 15. Ah, OK. OK. Um, so. Let us start building the gauge. I'll, I'll not do the calculations here. The calculations are in the paper. On archive, we can discuss this thing over the, 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 the coffee break if anyone is interested. But uh, I'll skip the calculations. I'll just give the idea of how to construct the gauge group. So first of all, we assume that the relevant quantities can be expressed as functions of the density operator. Well, this is not a strong assumption. Just, I mean, it, this means that every physical quantity must be expressed as a function of the density operator. Oh, it, it can depend on time, it can depend on the Hamilton, it can depend on all other, other operators, but the important thing, it must depend on the density operator, on the state of the system. Um, this is uh, one of very, very uh, important thing here. That's the energy of the system. I mean, the average energy of the system. That's defined like this. But this guy is the Hamilton of the system time G. Okay. So, um, usually work is defined like this. This was defined in 1979 by Robert Shalit, Alishik, which also works in Gdansk, actually. Um, this paper basically started what today is called the quantum thermodynamics. So he defined, he defined the work like this. Why like this? Well, because if you take a look at this guy here and you, you think about the probability distribution of a classical system, then this will be a probability distribution. This will be time derivative, the total time derivative of the Hamiltonian. So this is just the integrated power over the trajectory of the system. So that, that's why he defined the work like this. It's, I mean, it's just a transcription from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics. Hmm? And um, of course, the difference between this guy and this guy is heat by, by, by energy conservation. So those are the, uh, some, uh, some uh, important observables that we are uh, considering here. Gauge group, let's go there. So our theory, these guys play the role of um, the potentials, in, like the potentials in, in, in electrodynamics or in, in, in standard model or, or even in gravity. Um, so, but here they transform like um, unitary transformation. So the, ga the gauge group must be um, must be a set of unitary transformations because I don't want to change the system. I don't want to change anything in the system more than 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 than, than necessary. Look, there we have two two things here. One one is the gauge that that does nothing in the system; it's just a symmetry of the system. And the other one is the process that changes these guy in time. Here, this can be whatever whatever. I mean, the Hamiltonian, even not Hamiltonian, it can, be, it can be whatever you want. Just the gauge group that must be unitary. So, um, one thing that we must impose, average energy must be gauge invariant. 
I mean, it, do, it, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter what this guy does. It doesn't matter what the gauge group is. Average energy is the thing that we must agree. Everybody must agree on this. So it doesn't matter what the gauge, uh, uh, what's the action of the gauge on this guy. It must conserve the average energy. So we impose this thing from the scratch and we start developing the, the theory from here, from this uh, postulate, which actually is not a, a, a strong postulate. It's just a, a, a normal thing. But uh, this, this elects the, the, the energy eigen basis as a very special basis here. Of course. Yeah, it, it does not. Dynamically, no, yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm not changing. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not changing um, Hamiltonian in. I understood your question because, of course, Schrodinger's equation is not invariant under this guy. But I'm not talking about dynamics here. I need, I need energy operator, but but what I'm doing here is that selecting from the set of, of dense operators, I'm selecting a subset that can be transformed from one point to the other. And every one of these guys, independent of the process that is changing the Hamiltonian, and, and these will respect to, uh, the correct transformation of the Hamiltonian, will take me to the same value of the energy. So in, in a sense that I'm, I'm implementing here a coarse grain, this guy, uh, every, every dense operator that can be expressed at, in, in this way gives me the same value. So for the set, the, the set of dense operators, I'm uh, selecting a subset. This is the coarse grain that I'm doing. So uh, experimentally speaking, I'm just saying, if I give you any state in this subject, I cannot distinguish them from energy measurements. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's a very particular set based on this, this assumption. Um, assuming this, I can build the gauge group. Other, otherwise, it would be every every uh, uh, unitary matrix, and, and then it, it's going to be trivial. Uh, so I'm assuming now that I'm working a dimensional system. D can be whatever they want, but it must be uh, finite. We, uh, for infinite systems, is a little bit delicate, and we are thinking about this yet. Uh, so the set of transformation must be a subgroup of this guy, which is the set of four unitary matrices. And these we call the emergent group. So by by imposing these guys, imposing these, and using uh, uh, a typical um, uh, gauge group techniques, we can prove that this group is isomorphic to this guy, to this group here, where these n and one and two are the multiplicities of the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. You see, that's the condition that we impose, because this is the consequence of imposing that condition. So this is the emergent group that we have. But now to define thermodynamic quantities, to define physical quantities, we need, we need the higher measure of the group. But luckily, we know the higher measure on this group, and we know that as this form a subgroup of this guy, so the higher measure on this guy, which you call DG, um, uh, uh, the, the higher measure on this guy induces the higher measure DG on the, 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 the curly G group, on the thermodynamic emergent group. This is, this is easy to prove. I mean, it's, it's, it's not complicated to prove that once you have a higher measure here, uh, every subgroup of this guy also has a higher measure that you can compute. And then we can define it uh, for every physical quantity. We define the gauge invariant quantity like this. As the group of ages we do, as we usually do. And this holds for every point in time. So this guy is not, is not difficult to show that it, 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 this guy here is actually invariant under the action of this guy. A formal proof is given in the paper, but uh, it's, not, it's not very hard to, 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 to prove this. But uh, it is. I mean, this guy is exactly equal if I put V, V dagger here. They give the same result.
so that that's that's the way we we build every thermodynamic quantity. That this includes heat, work, entropy, and whatever you want. Uh, let us let us start with work. The usual definition of work transforms like this. So it goes to to itself, but it has this guy here. So it's not invariant under the action of this group. It changes. Um, instead, we propose this guy. But this, how I, 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 I obtain this guy? I just I, I, I just uh, put uh, um, the definition of work here and computed the average of the group. The result is this guy. And this U here is the unit that um, uh, diagonalized the Hamiltonian of this system. So it's, 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 very, it's very easy. And then this guy, we can prove that it's easy to prove that this guy is invariant. Of course, if I apply the gauge transformation, it gives me the same guy. And what are the implications of this thing? This thing is different from the other, the other, uh, the usual definition that people use. Um, but the, the implications is that since energy, average energy is invariant, work is invariant, and energy must be conserved, then we can readily define heat. But you can also pick up the, the, the expression of a heat and put them uh, and, and compute the gauge average, and the result is going to be this. The heat, the invariant heat, can be written in terms of two terms. This guy is the same as the same term defined by Alishki's 1979 paper. So it's the same thing here. But we have this extra guy here that depends on the coherence, coherences of the density matrix in the energy eigenbasis. This formally implies that um, irreversibility will arise every time you have a fast, a fast uh, enough uh, uh, process in order to generate transitions in the energy eigenbasis. This, the, the, that's that, that's the, 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 the main, the main uh, uh, thing here. And note that this holds also for closed systems. We must remember that thermodynamics is a, is a theory for closed systems. Um, this is just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, mathematical things, but we can rewrite in, 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 a, in a more friendly gauge language, just define this, this potential like this. Then we can define the invariant heat and the invariant work exactly in the same way as before. But instead of the, the, the usual derivative here, time derivative here, we have the, the covariant derivative. This is a sort of holonomy, but, uh, but the, in just in one dimension. So uh, uh, since the potential transforms like this, we have these guys uh, invariant in the, 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 the action of the group. So uh, this is the theory. I mean, this is the, the, the theory that we're proposing, the theory that, um, um, uh, you know, which we can, we can uh, under, uh, under the action of the gauge group, we can define, define a thermodynamic system. And um, of course, let us see a few examples. I, I do have time, no? Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's more than enough. Let us start with the basic one. I mean, everybody in this room uh, probably knows these, these equations, the linear Bloch equation is the time derivative of the density operator. This is the unitary part of the evolution. This is the non-unitary part of the evolution. For uh, a phase dumping environment, like a photo walk in, in, uh, through a, a, um, uh, an optical fiber, this is the model of the, the dissipation that you have there is just, I mean, phase is different. And, and this here is the amplitude dumping channel, like um, an atom in contact with an electromagnetic field. We will just, I mean, feel these, these environments, this will be the effective action of the environment on the, on, on the atom. And, um, and we, we just apply the theory for these guys. So this is the, the, the coherence rates. And things like this is n is just the n bar is just the uh, average excitation of the bath, which is linked to the temperature. Um, so let us compute this guy. In in general, these these will give us the, the the usual results that we expect from a system coupled to a huge environment, to an infinitely many degrees of freedom environment. Work is just the the the, the integrated power that is injected in the system. As usual, and and uh, and the heat is just the energy flux from the environment to the system or or, or, or backwards. So it's the, the usual thing. For the phase, you get this thing, which is zero, because the phase is 
we don't have exchange of energy in, in the in the I mean, this guy, this guy is not a, a, a exchange of energy because the, the interaction is diagonal. And uh, for the, the, the amplitude dumping channel, we have the usual energy flux. This is just the energy flux uh, between the system and the environment. The usual classical notion that you have. Um, but things start changing when you consider uh, uh, closely quantum systems. Uh, first of all, two weeks ago, I was in a conference and um, I, I learned that a, a, a sentence that I really agree with this. And, and one guy there said that uh, you are doing thermodynamics of a, a single, a single uh, qubit. This looks like um, um, thermodynamics on flat earth. Because I mean, thermodynamics is a thing that uh, uh, big. It is, so this example is just to show how things work, but don't, don't take too seriously the words like uh, work and heat in this thing. It's, it's just to show how, how this, this, this works, but it, it's not supposed to be related to work and heat, the notions of work and heat that we actually understand. Just show that the invariant work when I computed this thing here, uh, well, I'm, uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have a mathematical, enough mathematical skills to solve this thing analytically. And then I, I had to write the, 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 the write down the hump, the Heisenberg equation of motion and integrate numerically. Um, but the work just depends on the on the uh, on the eigenvalues. These are the 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 the, uh, the elements of the density matrix in the energy eigenbasis of the qubit, which means that the, the, the eigenbasis of this guy here. And uh, just to, to show up a lot, we he. We see here the, the work uh, in, in, in red and the heat in blue. The heat is exactly like this guy, except for the scale. This guy is a measure of coherency. It's how coherency changes uh, uh, during the, 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 the time evolution of the system. Hmm? But um, as I told you, this is just a qubit. A qubit makes no much sense to talk about thermodynamics. Let us go to bigger systems. Bigger systems are are are, are, are are much much nicer, especially because there is a a question that we don't know the answer yet. That is how a quantum system, a closed quantum system, thermalizes. We don't understand the answer of this question. We don't know how to answer this question yet, because the evolution, the entire evolution is unitary, so it, it should not thermalize, but it does in certain cases. And we simply don't understand. So that's why we are studying um, complex quantum systems, closed quantum systems. Let us consider this guy here. It's a very well-known model, LMG model. This is the angular momentum operator in Z direction. This is the angular momentum in the X direction, which means that this is just um, um, an angular momentum processing around the Z, Z direction and uh, with um, regular kicks, with stretching the... the, the the, the, the angular momentum in the x direction. And I pick up this guy here in this form because uh, in, these, in these units, when this guy is one half, we have a phase transition. So I want to avoid this point to not mix things here. So uh, I'm, I'm avoiding the phase transition point of this guy. So that there is no phase transition here. And uh, this is often the speed of the process that I'm telling. And this can go to infinity, which is I mean, I just changed the Hamilton instantaneously from very, very, very slow quenches. Hmm? And what happens is this. This, is the, 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 this arrow here uh, is, the, 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 is pointing to the increasing of the speed of the process. This is the coherence. This is the heat that accompanies this guy. So the work is not, is not plotted here, but um, I mean, uh, you, you guys understood. So. Um, the generation of heat increases with the speed of the guy. That's a thing that we want to, we expect that actually. Um, consequence for heat changing this. The, one of the simplest heat engines we have is auto cycle. Auto cycle uh, is composed by uh, four strokes, no, uh, two of them are non unitaries with couples to, to, to two different heat environments, and two of them are unitary, controlling the unitary operations. Usually people say that these controlled the unitary 
transformations are linked with uh, work and therefore no entropy production. But I mean, we expected that if you do the process very fast, entropy will be production in this thing because it, it, it needs to depend on the, on the speed the, uh, at which I'm running the machine. And, um, and here, as we saw, um, if we define it, define the uh, efficiency of the engine in the same way which the work divided by the heat absorbed from the, the hot environment, since heat depends on the speed that we are doing, in, and the work also depends on the speed because I increase the, the generation of heat, decrease the generation of work. So once I, I increase the speed of the process in the, in the, in the, in the heat engine, I will decrease the efficiency. That's one thing that we, we expect from the from, from classical thermodynamics, actually. And uh, and then I finally enter in the, in the final of my talk to talk about um, dynamic orgasmic effect. One thing is that um, how how um, how is the dynamics of the quantum field inside a cavity? I mean, how, how, how does the field thermalize? That's a question that we are interested in here. And um, if I apply the same thing to the phonoma entropy, the same gauge group to the phonoma entropy, compute the gauge average, what measures is this guy? So these guys, the entropy that's invariant and the direction of the gauge group, which means that this was defined, this was already defined in, in, in this paper here by Anatoly Pokovinikov. And some other papers that he used this thing to propose. Uh, here he proposed this entropy, which he called a diagonal entropy, as the thermodynamic entropy of quantum systems. And it has some uh, very nice properties. This, the, 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 the fundamental one is that it's an increasing function of, 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 uh, for all unitary process. So, and uh, this guy emerges from the. From the uh, this is a definition. Of this guy, but here it just emerged from the from from, from the from the theory. And um, and these guys are the eigenvalues of the, the density operator, I think of the, the elements of the density operators, diagonal elements of the density operators in the energy eigenbases. Uh, so let us apply to the non-stationary non-stationary Casimir effect. Um, I'll not show the details of the calculation. The details of the calculations are on the wall of the coffee break room. And uh, that guy over there, Gustavo Oliveira, uh, is presenting all the details of the calculations. You can ask him for the details. Uh, but we consider the usual, the usual thing. A one dimension of cavity, two perfect meters, one of them at x equals zero, the other one um, is performing this uh, um, uh, movement, this motion, and this guy is very, very small. So the usual, the usual thing. And at time t equals zero, it starts moving. And time t equal a big t, it stops moving, and at the same at the same position as the, the beginning. So using these, we can use two different approaches. One of them is the effective Hamiltonian that um, just was just shown in the last talk. Uh, and these allows us to study short time behavior because here we want to, we need to compute the time evolution of the stage, and this is extremely complicated. We need to use perturbation theory, and allows us just for a short time uh, thing. In the short time, we, we compute the entropy and the connections of coherence, generation of coherences between the modes of the field. And here, using another, another approach, we could study the long time behavior of the field, but just for a single mode. We were able to compute the, 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 the entropy for a single mode, which means in connect this with the, the, the entanglement between this mode and the rest of the modes. So the result is this, for the, the, the first approach, you get this thing, which is, in this case, is exactly equal to the coherence between the modes. It's exactly the same thing. So the entropy, the entropy is increasing once we increase the, 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 the coherences. And, um, and the, last, the, the, last, the last talk you made me think about one thing that um, there are there are there are situations in which the photons are absorbed to the to the meters, and I don't know how the behavior of this thing would be for these sort of motions. I really don't know. Um, and then 
the other the other the other thing is the coefficient the, 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 this is the the one of volume of transformations volume of coefficients that relates the the the, the, the field operators uh, before and after the motion of the carriage and the usual number of operators is, is this thing which is the guy that appears here with the number of particles generated there so uh, for the the, the, sh the long time regime we get this is for uh, the, the for a single mode the the diagonal entropy is equal to this guy here and this guy here for a Gaussian field for a Gaussian uh, 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 a Gaussian stage which is the vac we start in the vacuum so it's a Gaussian state evolving with a quadratic Hamiltonian we have a Gaussian state so we can apply this thing and this guy is the entanglement between this mode and the rest of the mode so we know that this guy is the entanglement but this guy is the covariance matrix of the 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 the, the future uh, so we conclude that for short short time the thermodynamic entropy is simply liquid of the generation of coherences and one, one important thing is that once this guy increases it cannot decrease because you can prove that under unitary transformation this guy doesn't decrease so it stabilizes this is an education of thermalization but we cannot we cannot say that the field is thermalizing we we need to study several other things to under, to properly understand this thing and um and for a long time these guys generate is, is linked with the entanglement that are generated among the modes of course we have several other questions here like in multipartite coherence multipartite entanglement and, and and a deeper study on the behavior of time type behavior dynamic behavior of the the of the entropy that we don't understand yet. Uh, so, final remarks. I think that I'm. Yeah, okay, very short, very short. Okay. Um, so, as I told you, this, this approach, we just proposed a gauge theory to, um, to, to help us to define the thermodynamic quantities in the quantum regime. That's the main idea of this thing. And then we apply it to several things. One of these is that. Um, uh, one of the main consequences that you have here is that um, um, entropy or heat generation are linked with uh, with uh, delocalization of energy, which is caused by transitions and, 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 and is linked to the speed of things that we are saying. This is just a paper that shows a bunch of uh, definitions of work that are not equivalent. Um, we have a several perspectives, like uh, I told you, thermalization of closed quantum system, which is a question that we don't understand yet. Um, of course, statistical definitions of this point is like statistical definition of entropy. How can we extend this thing into statistical physics? And the um, second law of thermodynamics, and of course, relativistic effects. I, I, I really don't, don't understand how relativistic effects um, work here. I mean, I, I just published a paper two weeks ago proving that uh, Entropy must be generated because of the causal structure of space-time, but here I don't understand exactly how, how, how to link these things yet. And um, with this, one, that's all I have to say, folks. Thank you very much for your attention, and many congratulations again, Professor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, Lucas. Uh, we have time for questions, I guess. There's one, okay. Questions, please. So, what if your Hamiltonian is non degenerate? Then this group is just the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, 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 that's a very, very interesting question, actually. I didn't comment on this, um, but um, you are asking because of uh, this thing. Yeah. If the Hamiltonian is. is, is um, here, I assume, I assume that the Hamilton is perfectly. Uh, uh, um, no, here it can be non degenerated. Okay, but when it's degenerated, this guy is one. Well. No, what, ha what happens is that this guy here will change. This guy, no, the, the, the higher measure of this guy will change in time. So I'm going to change it. I have to change this guy here in time. But there are ways to do this in group theory. I mean, if, if, if the structure of the Hamiltonian changes, 
during the process, and this can happen. Uh, like a, a phase transition, for instance. Then I have to change this guy dynamically, but, but this is okay, because there are ways to define this guy, uh, how this guy evolves in time. It's, In, ge in general, yes, but yes, yeah, but but yeah, but but but, but that's but that look the gauge group is not this one. The gauge group is isomorphic to this one. Yeah, yeah, it, it's like it's like I mean, um, uh, um, I'm just applying unitary transformations that generate random phases. In, 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 in several, in, in, in locally, locally. Yeah, but this changes, this changes entropy the way I define it here. Be because of this equation. Yeah. Are there more questions? Let's go over there. I have a philosophical question. Oh. You mentioned both uh, macroscopic limit and thermodynamic limit. What's yeah. the difference? Well, is there uh, any no, 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 I, 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 but for me, they are the same. Macroscopic or thermodynamic limits are, are called the same. I mean, when you go to infinitely many degrees of freedom, so you don't care and then about, fluctuations go okay. to zero. So you don't care about the state? No, I don't, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't exactly. care about the state. State can exactly. be anything. A state can be anything compatible with the, with no, the no, constraints. No, yeah. no, no, the state of the system, when you consider it macroscopically, can be anything from your point of view. Uh, no, it, it must be compatible with the, 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 the constraints I, impo I impose on the system. For instance, ah. if I give you the energy, uh -huh. so it must be a sphere, a hypersphere on a phase space. It's a micro, it's a, a micro canonical ensemble. What do you mean phase space? No, the, the, the condition of phase space is, Cla classical physics. Classical phase space not always exists. Okay? Oh, <laughs> oh it is very complicated to define it. Yeah, it's very complicated to define yeah. it. But I mean, if, so if. Speaking about sphere and the very complicated phase space, this is not very constructive point of view. I mean, for instance, can you. Modernamics of pure states. Because that, suppose you have noon state or you have a cluster state. Okay. This state and you average out over, say, degrees of freedom, say, mm. it gives as a class, it does not have a classical limit in okay. any representation. Okay, I understand. So, uh, so in from this point of view, uh, these limits, uh, I thought it should depend on the, on okay. the state, on the set, set of state you, you consider. Okay. For instance, I, I, if they are mixed state, then the question is simpler. But if you work with pure state, then it's not quite clear to okay, me. Okay, okay, I understood your question. It's actually a, a, a fundamental question. It's, um, the, uh, the answer is the following. Um, the entire state of the system is pure. When I confine it to local observers, observables, or just a set of observables, that what I'm doing here, I mean, when, when, when I write this equation here, and I write the definition of a work like this, I'm saying that I measure. I, I can only measure energy of my system. I cannot measure anything else. And what I'm saying is that the result of the measurements will give me these quantities, or entropy, or any other quantity. The same, the, the same result, independent of the of of the, the the pure state of the entire system. And this is because of, of coherences and entanglement. So uh, this is the same as saying that uh, it does it, it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the stage of a macroscopic system the, the, the quantum stage of a macroscopic system if I look for local observables the the, the averages because I'm a computer average here will be the same as the entire system is in the microcanonical ensemble that's the definition of thermalization for most of the states. Of course, there are states that this, this doesn't hold. I, I completely agree with you. There are states that this doesn't hold, like you inside the new state. And I can, can uh, uh, at least in principle, I can build a, a very huge new state. Yeah. 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 
yeah, but this we don't know how to do. This is a this is a very complicated question, and it's linked to why certain quantum systems uh, do not thermalize, while the overhammer majority of them thermalize. Okay, okay. Uh, let's thanks uh, Lucas and the other speakers of the sections.